Okay, here we are. Excuse the mess. Uh, got a lot of, had a lot of construction going on in the past and still haven't finished all the work that needs to be done around here. And plus the mess here on the floor with my death situation, diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, that's a whole nother story on my uh, 2015 Chevrolet Silverado during my accident anyway so let's that's, that's i may have a story about that later another video but we are concentrating right now on the trans alp xl 750 excuse me and what do we get today on the floor in the box haven't opened it yet okay let me get over here of course pull up on the old roll around snap on stool we're going to see what's in here. First of all, wait a minute. What's it say? Oh. Uh -huh. Beamer shop. Goods. Goods. Uh, more goods. Four. Trans help. Beamer shop. What could it be? This is something I've been talking about. And yeah. Uh, you know, I'm 200, over 260 pounds, so this is sprung for 260. I still need to lose a little weight. Up and down, up and down, but uh, yeah. And it's sprung for my weight, and the way I go through that rear shock, uh, yeah, it's not good from, from my weight. Maybe for a lot of other people, once you get over a certain you know, poundage. <laughs> yeah. And whoop. I'm gonna see. Well we know what it is already. Get the leg out, buddy. Alright, tractive suspension. It's supposed to be a shock, I'm pretty sure. Uh what I like about the uh, trans out now, I I know this is a little bit more travel i guess it kind of gets it a little closer to the travel that's up front this is 200 millimeters uh up front and 190 on the 190 millimeter on the rear they say and uh but <laughs> i flow through it pretty good i'm not finding any problem really with the forks uh as much you know well, i'm not i'm just you know i did have to crank up the preload a little bit but uh you know i mean yeah it sure could it could be better but right now we're trying to find what it should be and my weight like i said it i travel through that suspension too too hard and uh so i got a 25 millimeter plus so it's almost an inch uh, a little shy of an inch. I think it's like 980 thousandths of an inch. So like about 20 thousandths, that's really thin, you know, of an inch. And so, yeah, it's close to an inch. So this is going to come up an inch more, but it's kind of low. You know, I'm, I'm sent, putting my, planting my feet down on the ground, with knees bent. So I'm not having a problem with touching the ground on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Woo, those tacos. Bells mm. <clears throat> right up through my nose. But anyway, uh, so what's good about this is that linkage right there. That may be, uh, unless I like it, uh, if it sets it up, I don't want a stink bug effect. If it does, I'll have to get cartridges for the front. I may still end up doing that if this... Uh, but I kind of find the, f the forks on this handles pretty good. It's not bottoming out. I mean, you know, it's not going through the stroke as bad as that was. That was strange, you know. Th this seems a little stiffer in the front, or it's a little closer to more road bias. Maybe that's what it, what it, why it is the way it is, you know. But uh, so, uh, so if I get up too high in the air, then I'll either I'll either get a the uh, 
uh, tractive suspension cartridges for the front with, uh, I may have to modify it a little. It just depends on how I'm sitting, you know. <clears throat> you know, um, when I'm sitting on it and reaching up, I almost feel like I'm a little bit on a, you know, uh, was it a chopper effect or whatever? You know, maybe I'm squatting it down too much. But that's probably the reason I'm crushing it down and, and uh, it feels like I'm just sitting too low. It's probably for my weight. And I may have messed up. I probably should have got for my weight with the 200 millimeter. Well, they didn't have it. They, it's, it's supposed to be the factory 190 millimeter or whatever. Uh, you know, but more travel shouldn't be a problem. I'm sure eventually, if I, I probably can work something with the, uh, the linkage down there, the shock linkage. So anyway, we're going to take a look at this. This is just going to see what it looks like because I won't be putting on. Well, I'll probably be putting it on on, on this video. It depends. <laughs> no, well, it depends on. Uh, if I just upload it after I'm talking about it, then the next time I'm I'm uh, either riding around on it or I'm doing a video of installing it, or, or all the above. So now this has already been opened, not by me. Well, they do have to order. Uh, if they didn't have the spring for me, for my weight, wow. They just, let's really do a lot of stuff here. I'm sure this is some information here about it. Um, here's what I've got now. I've got the, well, oh, these are just telling about the clickers, adjustments. Because I got the full, fully adjustable. Here we are. Here we are. The one I have is this one. Uh, they have the they have the stock. Let's see. No, no, no. Uh, okay. They have this one and this one, and then they also have these that are regular. It looks like. No, no. Here, here, here's mine right here. This is this plus. Oh, get on track. Uh-huh. It just fell out. So this is one I've got. The 46HO23. Might say 23 and up because the uh, Europeans already had this bike out, you know, in 2023. The Trans Alps. Uh, XL750. Since then. And anyway, dash... T5524TR. That's the one I've got. Hmm. But it's not telling the... Well, it says right here. I don't know if... I think that's the way they do that. They've got this one, which is... Oh, okay. This one is this one. This one is this one. The middle one. That's uh. So you could actually lower them. I mean, you could actually hit less travel. I don't know if you'd want less travel... Yeah. If anything, this would be a popular one. Probably most popular. Uh, because it, I find it, most people are comfortable with its height. I mean, if you're really short-legged, you know, you might go that way. That's good that they've got these options. And uh, so that's the middle one. This one right here is the plus 25 millimeters. So... Like I said, I find I'm sitting squatted down. It's probably because of my weight. So there it even shows well, how to install. Put the motorcycle on a work stand. Yeah, I can do all that. That'll probably be coming up. But I'll probably do a little short video and post this, or I'll probably put it in with a uh, uh, yeah, playlist. All right, add it to my playlist. English, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does it say usually? I think it's in here. Here's my. Yeah, here's the one I've got. Here we are. Everybody's going to be. There it is. That's the one I've got right here. And it's for my weight. 
they already have my weight on file because I've already bought a few suspension upgrades from them. And uh, yeah. now my last shock and uh, uh, cartridges, but they got me my weight on file. That looks pretty thick compared to the spring. Oh my gosh. Mm, that's, uh, that's got some beefy boingers there. Or a beefy guy, I guess. All right. Uh huh. So, oop, I got everybody seeing my. Oh, no. Uh huh. I got your phone number. Yep. Yeah. Mm, I'm in trouble now. So, uh, mm -hmm. if I can remember to blur it out. Yep, there we ha have it right there. That's what I've got. There it is. 46HO23-255. Two four, tractive, plus twenty five millimeters, extreme PA Pro XL seven fifty. So if y'all want to know what the, uh, oh got it. If y'all want to know what the part number is, that's it right there. Okay, we're gonna take a well. A brief look, yeah. I don't think I'm doing anything brief, do I? And it tells about it. it tells about the, you know, the, um, uh, the clicks. Yeah, you got ten clicks. Oh, oh, wait, this is ten. They want me to do that on. What do they want me to do on this one? Ten also. So that's a starting point. All right, ten. So. All right, and that is the, all right, that is, they want that to do that on the, on the dampening, compression, low speed, compression, high speed, 10, 10, and 10. And the preload, hmm, that's still, okay, all right, it looks like, okay, that's probably 17, hmm. Yeah, 17 turns. Wow. Plus eight. Eight. Oh, yeah. Plus eight or minus two millimeters. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's right. I don't know. That's probably not turns, is it? I'll find out. I don't know where they got it. They usually set it pretty close to what this is, what these settings are when they send it. I mean, that's the way the other one felt. The other one, I believe, was. Yeah. Huh, man. Let's look at this thing. Let's look at it. Now, what's nice about them? They give, they send you some, they send you some tools and a mounting bracket. That's going to be a mounting bracket for this. Probably going to be. Looks like to me. Probably. I'm just looking at it. I bet you anything. It's going to be on the inside. Look at that. That's where they want you to put that. Well, it's going to be on the other one. It'll be on that one over there. So it'll be kind of like this on the other one. I guess you could do it like that. You can put it on either side, I guess. It doesn't matter. I'd put it on that side over there. These, these seem to match up with those holes. Yeah, that's what they want you to do. I don't know. I don't see any other place, but it looks like that was in the picture. Whoops. They want you to mount this bracket. Uh -huh. Give me tools to put the uh, preload adjustment. This is uh, works hydraulically. Oh, that's, that's cool, isn't it? Man, this color, yeah, mm, makes me think of KTM. That's what's on that one. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to do that just yet. I just want to take a look at it. Look at this puppy. Now, mm -hmm. oh man, now that spring, oh, <clears throat> I hope I'm not testing something that hasn't been done before. But, looking at it, 
You look at this spring and look at that spring. Hmm, that is thin. No wonder I'm going through the stroke on that thing. Man, I mean, it's just like my back is hurting. I don't. I do not ride around very comfortable. This is a comfortable. To me, it's a pretty comfortable seat. But but uh, man, it feels really, real like you know. Hmm. Uh, well, probably because I got this. I got this turned up all the way. Preload on that because I just I just go through the strokes so bad on my weight. Yeah, I mean, if I was more closer to 220 or something like that, 200, you know, but being about two over, you know, 260 plus, that looks really good. That looks really, really good. So I'm assuming that this thing here, would it go like this? Would it go like this? Hmm, it depends. <clears throat> we'll get that in there. There's probably, oh well, it's got some illustrations in the uh, paperwork that come with it. This is really nice. I, I don't feel like unwrapping this till I get it on there. I don't want to skin this up because, you know, this is probably, may flop around a little bit. But uh, so if anybody wants to know, there's your spring weight. I guess it's a. Uh, mm hmm. I forget how, I think it's the first numbers, 120 Newton meters. I think that's the way that's set up. Wow, we, uh, what is this? 3123, I don't know. Anyway, attractive, TT, mm-hmm, yeah, TT. Doesn't that, doesn't that look nice? Oh, man. Now, does this, I don't know if I want to peel it off. It looks pretty thick. Yeah, oh yeah, I think they just want to, it might be a sticker to peel off, it might be gone with the plastic. But they got it on there so neat. I mean, so uniformly correct. Leave it alone. This is all the information. They, they have really some high quality suspension. I don't know where this is set at, I wonder, I feel like Backing it all the way up and then counting it back where they've got it set. But there you have it. I don't, rec I don't know about the screw. I know we have right here, and we have right here. Oh, that's it. I don't. There's no other. There's no other. And uh, yeah. So evidently, they've got. Huh. Out. Hmm. Got my finger, huh? So, I guess if you didn't have this, you'd be cranking this, right? But that looks like that is the way that looks, like it's spun up and then glued on, which is fine with me because I've got the preload adjuster right here, it's remote, or remotely from it, you might say, but still manual. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, I know I'm loading over here. Oh, here's my other adjustment. There's my adjustment. I think, isn't it? Wait a minute. What do I have? No, that's, uh, no, that's just, uh, better not fool with that. This is, this is the adjustment. This is the adjustment. This right here is probably to drain it out with. I'll follow along with the instructions. Be careful what you loosen on these things. These are adjustments, I know for a fact, and that's adjustment. And this is, a, and, and there's no more adjustments than that. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but I will check into it. Doesn't, doesn't that look good? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, unboxing, tractive suspension rear shock for the Transalp XL750. Yeah, looks good, I like that. So, either I'll do a video of uh, taking this apart and uh, putting this one on. Might have to do a time lapse if I'm going to do that because uh, I've got some comments before. It was painful to watch, <laughs> watching my video when I was installing the, uh, uh, what was it, the little cruise control thing. That works really good. That works really good. I, I still have to uh, upload a video for the uh, they call it cruise control, but 
uh, throttle stabilizer. It works really good. And you just back it out and it locks onto the O-ring. It's, it's perfect. And, uh, yeah. So we got a few upgrades going on. We already got the uh, Akrapovich uh, muffler on there. That thing oh, sounds really good. And the next step is going to be installing the tractive rear shock by Ted Porter's Beamer Shop. That's where I got that. You can type in beamershop.com, B-E-E-M-E-R-S-H-O-P.com, and you'll see all this information. Yes. I've talked about it enough. Okay. So, this is what we're doing. I got the uh, shock, tractive rear shock on this. I got it with uh, plus 25 millimeters travel. And so, that kicked it up enough to be, um, I won't say a stink bug effect, but, you know, not not like that. That sits perfect when I got the front forks. I bought it with the, you know, front forks and rear shock. That's the best thing to do. If you're gonna, if you're gonna do the suspension upgrade uh, with uh, no problems, if you want 25 plus millimeters of travel in the back, I ought to do the same for the front, but it is taller than uh, my Tuareg, believe it or not. <laughs> so it's a, so what I had to do, I like to travel. I mean, it, it's 15 millimeters more travel than the front. Whereas before it's 10 millimeters, yeah, 10 millimeters less travel than the front. Uh, the uh, thing I'm doing, of course, is the link here. And so this linkage that I got, I've already taken the one off of the trans out. Now, looking at the whole, I mean, look at the difference. It is about uh, the distance between the hole to hole is, you know, I'd say it's a little more than a quarter of an inch is what it looks like. So, you know, uh, but it makes up for it when you hook it all, hook everything up. On their website, it says one eight, one inch lowering. Uh, 25 millimeters is close to one inch. And this, on the technical data page, it showed it was 875,000, point 875 thousands. Not quite an inch of uh, uh, lowering than the factory. Since I've went up an inch, virtually pretty much a, an inch more, close to an inch more than the factory, then this is going to put me right back at factory specs, lowering it to the, you know. Uh, so I, I won't get away from the stance of the bike it may be it probably won't never feel it uh you know the difference between this and maybe thirty thousandths of an inch i don't even know what that is well or 250 if you say uh yeah 0.39 it'd be a little more something like that but uh it's not even going to be i don't think it's going to be uh maybe a eighth inch more than factory which is fine I, my knees were bent anyway I actually felt felt like I was squatting down in the back all the time. But I'm heavy. I'm, well, it's about 270 pounds now. It was 260, 270. And uh, so I kind of crushed it down, and I had to replace the shock. Because that shock over there, you see it on the floor right there. Yeah. That spring is uh, a lot smaller, and it's... I cranked it all the way up, and what I found it doing, let me grab it over here. What I found it, found it doing, it got my, 
you know, my height, my riding height, my sag. I was trying to get it worked out. I, uh, what I found it doing was almost like pogo sticking uh, or skipping over bumps on, in the road. I, and so, you know, I had it turned all the way up. To turn this adjustment here, cranked it as far as I can go. You can see it up there. Pretty much where it used to be down here, the second from there. So I cranked it up. And uh, this spring, if you look at this spring, uh, yeah, where was it? this spring and then that spring that spring is quite a bit well a little bit fatter a little bit thicker i think it's something like twenty thousands thicker or something like that looks wider because it's white also but so uh so i want to be able to uh take the bumps and I don't want to bottom out. I bottomed out a few times too many. And then uh, if you put him back on the back or got that in there full of, you know, luggage or something like that, it, it was really felt like I was uh, with the factory shock squatting. And I just couldn't get it up anymore without it skipping it down the road, like, you know, <clears throat> over, over bumps on the highway. It handled good, though. I mean, it really did handle good. But... Once I got off the road, I knew it. I knew it just for my weight. I had to change the spring anyway or do something. So I just went ahead with Tractive because Tractive I found to be very, very, very good. You might see a video of that 890 that I've got uh, with uh, checking out the the field back here and a few of the ruts and stuff. And so that's what I've done here. And I've got the uh shock on there that was the, that's the easiest shock i've ever seen to put on anything that was a, a cinch that was a piece of cake i took that out and had took that out and had that one in probably not even 30 minutes and it was just too easy i felt like i was missing something but so what i've done i've took this linkage off you can see uh we're gonna find out i'm gonna you know so the you can see the hole and it's probably about half of that over so that's probably that's probably a little more than a quarter of an inch so uh it will drop me down uh the website when the advertising is one inch well i guess you technically technically could do that if you bound uh, you know lower you know uh backed off the preload yeah you probably could but on the technical page it showed to be Point eight hundred seventy-five thousandths lower than than what the uh, factory was on that, and this this link is the same thing that you find that they've done for the and the same part number CRF one thousand dash one that's on the Africa Twin, I think uh, one thousand and eleven hundred. Uh, I forgot what the years are. You'll see it on their on their website. You go to Coba Link. Kubalink.com, uh, you'll see it on there. Uh, I think that, uh, oh, yeah, 2015 to 2018 or something like that, uh, this works on, and it just so happened to work. Same, that part number for that is the same I found on a couple of websites as Africa Twin. So there's some things that this bike shares. I wonder if the wheels from the Africa Twin with the cross spokes to give me, hmm, that's a thought, to give me, uh, yeah, tubeless wheels. That's a thought. Now, I may do that. I may try to find some Africa Twin wheels and see if I can't deck this out. I do like the black. I know they have gold, and it seems to be, uh, yeah, but nothing's gold on this one except that right there. So, hmm, that might kind of bang, bang. I don't know. But anyway, that's it. I'm a lot of chit chatter and stuff, you know, chattering and stuff. And it's got a grease fitting. That's what's really cool. So we're going to put this on. And it's a matter of just sliding that bolt in and then that bolt in, and I'm done. So it's really, really easy. And I think everybody's seen these um, videos of people putting these links on. So I'm going to put this linkage on this, and then we're going to see how it feels <clears throat> when I get this back to where the specs were. I would advise anybody, if they don't want to do with this and buy this, if if you buy the the shock for the trans out, just get the standard. If you want the 25 plus, 
you'll either, well, well that's a lot of money. Because I find the forks do pretty, I find them doing really good. I'm not jumping this thing, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I've got a dirt bike over there for that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the twelve rag's pretty well, yeah, you can't, the suspension on that thing is crazy good. But anyway, back to this, I'm trying to make this crazy good too. And uh, I like the, the forks. I don't want a ton of dive. And I turned it up a couple turns on my preload on the forks. I found it actually pretty good. And where I found when I had to bring this up for my weight, that when I bottomed out, you might see a video of mine, I felt like I was gonna get catapulted over the, <laughs> uh, over the windscreen on this thing because it felt, you know, it went down and with the clash. And so with the add, added 25 millimeters travel uh, and plus using this, it'll give me travel, travel without uh, getting my geometry way off. But I do know there's some changes in the geometry way the linkage works. But since I've sprung it to my weight, it should be okay. So we'll... We'll check that out on the next video, the trans out, and uh, with the suspension change and upgrades with the tractive suspension along with the Kuba link, uh, yeah, lower linkage. Here we are on the trans out, Pixel 750. On this linkage, when I found out, whoops, with uh, swapping the linkage here with the uh, Kuba link. Uh, as you can see, it hits that hump right. Well, let me get it lined up here. Yeah, this, it, everything is dimensionally, dimensionally correct. But see that, that place, well, well, <laughs> there, right there. So I'm gonna draw a line right through here like that, knock off that little knot. Because somehow or another, they, <laughs> they uh, did a lot of the arithmetic, right? But they didn't compensate for that knot right there. And hmm, I guess it's not a problem with Africa Twin since they share the same linkage. Supposedly it's the same part numbers of Africa Twin. And so they just assumed uh, it would be about the same, but since I'm the first one that's done this, oh, this is hard to hold this. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to set this down. I will set this down for now and then draw a line and then show you where I draw the line. Draw the line. Put a little line here. Okay, and I'm just gonna take off just a little bit, just enough to let it where, it's, where it swings down. And uh, everything else seems to be right, you know. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I've got the wheel down quite a bit, so there's the line, you can see the line I've drew, drawn. Oh, you see the little black line? There we are. And that's there at the corner, right there. Drew a little black line right there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then we're gonna grind that little tip off. And then as long as that drops down, if we go, it doesn't need to go any further, it doesn't need to go any further than this because this is straight up and down pretty much. So we'll give this a shot. As long as I can drop down freely without anything rubbing, we're good to go. Yep. Linkage. So what I'm doing here, you just want to knock a little bit of this little knot off. You don't want to get down to here, although I touched it and that's okay. Knock the lower, well, knock the lower corner on each side down. Well, anyway, yeah. Just a little bit off the each side till it swings down. Okay, let's give it a shot. Uh -huh. Yeah, 
Let's give this a shot. This might be the deal. We just wanted to miss this hump. Oh, this, oh, this right here, it's hitting on this, on the inside of it, where I got it chamfered. So we're going to, right now, oh, let's set this right here. Okay, here we are in the uh, garage slash warehouse, it looks like. <laughs> and um, where we left off was putting on the Kubalink lowering. But actually, uh, the shock I got on there, the tractive shock was 25 millimeters more travel than the stock one which man, this thing really handles good, but it's rainy and muddy and nasty out. So it'll be on the next video how it handles, but I took it out. I didn't have my camera going or anything like that, but it is great. It is really great. And the stance is pretty much the same as factory now. It may be about a, not even a quarter inch more. I can feel a little bit, but I can flat foot it. I could not flat foot it. I was tippy toeing when I put that shock on there. And uh, the stance was a little bit, you know, <clears throat> I didn't want, I actually, the rake was good on it for uh, high speed. It seemed like it did really good. It was really stable on the highway. And I didn't want to have any issues by throwing off, throwing off the, uh, you know, the, the way the bike was designed and, and I also wanted to make sure my trail was as close to what it was factory because it just handles so well. And so I may have a little uh, less rake than, which is good because, you know, it, it's so nimble. I mean, you, you can really turn it around pretty good. So I didn't really, I put it pretty close to factory now as far as the height, the seat height from the ground. And uh, I think it's just a little bit more, I, I might, I'll say my knees are a little less bent. It's still a tiny bit bent, you might say flat footed. Uh, but the, uh, when I bought that shock, when I put that shock on there, I sat on it and I said, oh, oh holy cow, I'm tippy toeing. I'm tip, uh, I, I was struck, I was thinking, can I, I didn't tippy toe a whole lot, but you know, I was on the uh, balls of my feet and uh, solid balls of my feet, I might say. But uh, it, it was so good where it is, where it was. Uh, if anybody's going to do this, just get what Tractive has for it—the stock setting, the stock shock, if you want—and uh, you'll be you'll be just fine with it. It'll be able to handle everything, but. <clears throat> I just somehow or another, I'm a stickler for trying to keep my uh, travel front and the back the same or close to it as possible. But actually now my travel is about 15 millimeters more on the back than the front, uh, which is fine because this spring here is set for my weight. So, uh, and I had to crank up the preload on the front, of course, to match it. And it really, it, it, it's really good. I, I don't think the, I don't think the cartridges or front forks need to be changed, really. I mean, that's just my opinion. If you get more aggressive, yeah, if I was wanting to do, you know, uh, uh, you know, just really just taking it, winging it out there and really, you know, uh, jumping things, maybe something like that. Yeah, I probably would go with attractive cartridges front and back and, uh, but the the way it's set, it, it's really good. So, what I did to keep my uh, to keep the the height the way it was, which I liked it, but it's up a little bit, maybe a quarter inch. But setting on it, I can't. You know, I can tell because uh, this spring for my weight doesn't sag down. Uh, even the factory shock when you just pushed it up on the end, it would go down. I mean, it would, it had a, to me, a considerable amount of sag without even being on it. 
And then I got on it. I felt like, what in the world? I felt like I was almost a chopper ride. I mean, I felt like I was reaching up in the air, you know, because of my weight. So I definitely had to do something. My spring, the spring was just way too soft for me or too, I might not be able to say soft. I might say weak for my weight uh, because you can, you know, bring up the preload a little bit, try to get your height up. But I had it all the way and still when I, when I had, when I had preload practically up all the way, it still went down because of my weight. But then when I was hitting bumps on the road, uh, it skipped. It was like, okay, I'm, uh, I'll hold your weight to try to get, you know, get your level as good as, as good as it could. But at the same time, when I got, when it would uh, go over bumps, a little bit of airborne or any kind of little bump, bump it, it started skipping. It. And then it was, it's just for me, just for me. And uh, this road out here, out in front of my house, it's got a lot of bumps in the road. I mean, it's got a lot of, uh, you know, how when, uh, when they pave a road and it's been maybe a few years before they paved it, the sun affects it. You got those knots and bumps and, and they hit that. And then um, when I got on that, I, I don't have any problem. It's really comfortable. Even the Tuareg's pretty comfortable. Actually, that one's better on the road than the Tuareg, even with bumps. Uh, the 890 is because the tractive suspension is just that good. And uh, this and the Tuareg is pretty much just more plush off road, and that's about all. So, uh, but if you're an aggressive, the aggressiveness of the tractive front and back, uh, the cartridges and the rear shock on that is, oh, it's really, it's, it's perfect. I mean, for me, it's just sublime, it's great. So, <clears throat> what I did was uh, back to this put on the rear shock, the tractive shock, and now I uh, got the Kuba Link. So <clears throat> I don't wanna to get too much into all the other, you can see the Kuba Link there. And what I had to do, and uh, like a showing, and you can probably see the, the little grind. You may see the little grind. It's hard to see with the exhaust in the way, so I can't really get in there. Let me get over here on the other side. <clears throat> and you can see the little bit of a grind that I did. Like this notch up here, I cut it down. I just buzzed it down. And uh, yeah, you can see where I grabbed a little bit of it, and there's still a little bit of the red <laughs> in there, but anyway. So I, I didn't go past this this part of it, or this up in there, this uh, right here. I just knocked this little bit of edge off right there. <coughs> Excuse me, right here to clear this because this link will not go down any further than the length of the shock travel. And uh, when I got, when I get the wheel all the way up, it never, you know, there, I've still got about this much travel more down, which it don't matter. It'll never go down that far anyway, because the shock's not that long. The shock at its farthest length of travel. So that's all you have to do and I don't know why, the, I don't think these were tested. These were, uh, you might say, paperwork done. So uh, we can do all that, you know, uh, grafting on a board and, and drawing things up and planning. And But then when it gets time to field test, I don't think they did it. So uh, this is a field tested uh, setup here. Kubelink. And the part number CRF 1000 dash one. Same length they say they used on the Africa Twin uh, 1000 to 1100 uh, Africa Twins in the uh, years 20, I forgot, 2011 to 2016 or something like that, 2017, 18 maybe. And uh, so, oh, this thing is good. 
you know, it's got all the all the settings, you know, on the other side, you know, right here, high speed, low speed uh, setting, and then the preload, of course, is over there. I can, yeah. Well, let's, let me get around here and show you more about it. <clears throat> but anyway, that's it. That right there did it, and it got my setting right. And uh, so, you know, this this is no further down. Believe me, this never this. It can't go past this right here of the factory uh, linkage right here. This piece right, yeah, this piece right here that goes that attaches to the link as well as to the shock lower shock. And so, you know, it it gave me about I've got about a, probably a you know maybe a quarter of an inch more ground clearance. You know, which I, I don't find it a big deal with this because I am getting a skid plate put on here. And uh, and I'm also going to put a uh, uh, right, right, uh, center stand for it. Go there. It looks like I got a little grease there. But anyway, so that per worked out perfect. And it gave me a little more. I'm up maybe a quarter inch more, which I felt like I was squatting anyway in the back. And so here, here's the, and it's on the right-hand side. The preload adjustment. They call it a moat preload. Yeah, see, and it's out of the way. It's in the clear. It worked out really, really good. I'm really, uh, whoops, impressed with this setup and how it goes on there. They they give you a plate. Tractive does the mount. Uh, excuse me. Ooh, one I ate. Anyway, they give you a plate and it goes sandwiches between this actually it's a support for your shock as well as your pillion rider foot peg passenger foot peg bracket and it sandwiches right in between there uh if anybody wants to get this set up for the shock and they're, they're complaining about the shock like i was and my back let me know and uh, my lower back especially i was ready to you know it's okay, you know, I'm sure for a younger guy, but <laughs> when you get a little older and your your body tends to tell you what you've done for the day, uh, that that's a must. For me, that is a must. That shock was the best thing I've ever done to this thing. Well, that right there, oh, and it, it comes right in there. It come up in the air in second gear without clutching it. And I think because this thing has so much, when you gun it, you squat down so much that you're spinning your, you're, you're spinning your, uh, <laughs> uh, spending your horsepower, you might say, on this. And so it's doing like this instead of going like this. So now I can get the wheel up a lot quicker, a lot easier. Well, first gear is not a problem. There's no clutching needs to, to do to raise the front wheel on this. And maybe because I've gained some horsepower or something, I can tell a difference with that. When when uh, the stock one revved up, a run out, it seemed yeah, it seemed like it just ran out. It seemed like it just lacked a little bit of oomph. It had it, it had plenty. I mean, it's got as much. But you know what I'm used to? Let's see that 1290 Super Adventure R. Well, and when you get to ride in these bikes like the 890 Adventure and the horsepower, uh, you know. You know, other things tend to, tend to be a little on the power side, uh, underwhelming. So, uh, so that that was a big improvement. I love the gearing on this bike. The the I think the engine and the transmission is perfect, perfect for all around. You know, just just having a blast on it. Just make it a, a travel from anywhere you want to go from from home to work from. Well, you know, to, to, uh, yeah, to Starbucks or wherever you want to go to the park. This thing is so comfortable, so nice. And I've got heated grips I got to put on it next. And so that tractive shock gave me, uh, you know, it did bring it up, but I put that Cuba link and that part number I showed on there, you know, that, uh, that you see it there. You'll want, you'll want to, 
That's C, yeah, yeah CRF 1000 1. <clears throat> you can get that from kubalink.com and you will you will really like it. it, it that's now that's if you're going with the 25 millimeter more travel, the plus 25 from Tractive on the shock. If you're going to go with that, get, I'd say get that link. Or if you're really long legged past 32 inch inseam, uh, then then don't do nothing with the link. Get that and then get your cartridges, the uh, uh, the 25 millimeter cartridges. You know, plus uh, from Tractive as well. But I've got a 32 inch, inch inseam. I don't have, you know, 33 or 30, you know, anything anything 33 and up. Yeah, I would. I probably wouldn't even touch, wouldn't even put that link on there. But it would make me spend the money for the four cartridges. And so... Uh, I think anybody would be fine if they just got the the one that's you know the the stock setting, I, and I could not see anybody lowering this thing. They could, and I didn't. I all I did was with that linkage. It's a lowering link, but I compensated for pretty much over an inch high. Yeah, and uh, so that, what I'm saying is I compensated over being an inch higher up. Uh, seat with the uh, with, by putting the linkage on there so so right now my settings are are pretty close to uh the dimension the height you know the seat height is the factory and like i said it might be a little more than a quarter inch higher up but i got a 32 inseam inch in, inseam and i'm fine and since i brought the preload up on the front car front uh, forks it sets perfect. It sets really good. So uh, back to the attractive shock. Uh, I can get the numbers for you too here. Let me get, I <clears throat> got the set over here. Here we are. I've got the, uh, this is what I got. Uh, it is a 46HO23-25524. And that's that's the part number. That is the Tractive Plus 25 Extreme PA Pro XL750 Trans Out. That is the, at the now this is from Beamer Shop. Oh, yeah, I, I don't want to give my address, but anyway, well, there's their. I don't know if they want to be. You, you got every, their information at BeamerShop.com's where you where you can. Uh, they don't mind people calling them. They've already told me that, so I guess you can call them if you if you like. But uh, and uh, they'll set your. They don't mind setting your weight up. You can fill it out online. Get your weight. You got to tell them your weight, or you can call them in. I guess and uh, tell them your weight, and they'll they'll set you up, and it'll be spot on. But this is the one I got, the plus twenty five millimeters, which of travel. Uh, which suspension travel, which overall the shock is about a little greater than a quarter inch, it looks like, maybe not that much, um, you know, overall length compared. But, you know, and I think it may be, I don't know what the stroke is compared to the the piston stroke on the shock compared to the uh, uh, the Transout factory Honda shock. I think it may be a little like, seven millimeters more or something like that which but by the time you by the time you get it out here that's where you're getting your extra 25 millimeters you know travel so so uh, there you there you have that right there and the uh here's all the other others you get for the now this this is just for the rear this is for the 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 uh uh one of the, this is the, okay, all right, these are all the different ones, okay, and the one I've got is the, the, the 522, okay, here's mine down here, this is the, this will be a plus 25 millimeters, it's not telling that, but here's all your adjustments, but these are all the ones that you'll find on the website, 
the part numbers and uh, this these are I guess these are probably the extreme pros with uh, all the adjustments you know compression dampening high speed low speed preload you know all the all the good stuff so and uh, that's the one I've got again there's the you'll find that part number on their website at, at beamershop.com and uh so ted porter's beamer shop i even talked to ted occasionally i've talked to him a few times already he set me up and uh he's got a lot of a lot of experience on this stuff getting your bike right so and uh they're they're a <clears throat> distributor for attractive and uh they set them up there too they'll send the stuff in and and uh, they'll know exactly what you need to get your bike set right, especially your if you got a trans out like this one. You'll have a you'll have a blast. I'm telling you, that's a game changer for me. That's a game changer. That shock, uh, it 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 handles so good. It is so good. It is so 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 good. So again, uh, yeah, and they, then then that uh, Cuba Link, you know, the CRF. 1000-1 at kubalink.com. You can get that set up. That's if you want to get the 25 millimeters. I would suggest doing that if you want to leave the front forks alone. Uh, I find it handling good. I just come to my stroke a little quick for my weight. And uh, when I went down to that dried out creek bottom there, uh, just the factory one just didn't do it for me. And uh, so... There it is. Hope you enjoy this. Yeah, like, subscribe, and share. Okay, now that we got the tractive suspension set up on the rear, we're going to check the pipe, the, uh, the city pipe, <laughs> with, uh, with the tractive shock. And with the Kuba Link. All right. Now, before I was down a little bit, not much, uh, not much. It feels really comfortable. It really does. You know, I can go on over. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> before my knees were bent a little more, they're still bent. Both heels are touching the ground. slight bend. Before it was more of a bend, I could tell. But also the rear shock let me go down further, the fact, especially the factory shock, because I, I could crank the uh, preload all the way up to bring myself up to get my, it, it just couldn't, it just couldn't do this justice and get me in the air. <laughs> Where I, you know, it felt, and when I accelerated, whenever I accelerated, I always feel like I'm squatting down, like I go down and then take off. Of course, I'm, you know, about 270 pounds, 275, so like, yeah, I did gain a little bit. But uh, that's it. That's way, way better than uh, without that link. Because when I put the 25 millimeter uh, plus travel, in other words, it, it's 200. 215 millimeters supposedly is what the uh, travel would be on the rear uh, because it was 190, so I gained 25 millimeters, which makes 215 millimeter travel. Uh, from my, you know, doing the math, and the front is 200 millimeters, so you know, 15 millimeters more on the back than the rear. Before it was 10 millimeters less, 190 millimeters travel on the back and uh, 200 millimeters on the front but you know the travel wasn't a, wasn't a big thing it's just that I ran out of you know in other words I've come to the quick stroke of the uh, you know a little, a little more abrupt and, and then I had that one incident you might see it on one of my videos where I hit down and I actually felt like the seat was going to buck me off and it wasn't that series of a dip so I've taken the 890 Adventure as well as those bikes and it, this really was, and this, uh, it was a little, uh, you know, it, it, I won't say it was firm. It was
was just, it was soft and then firm up really quick and then uh, uh, kind of spiked me, you know. So I was coming to the end of the travel of the shop. So, uh, you know, that needed to be changed. And so that's the, and I've already taken this down the road and I uh, should have put the, you know, should have geared up the camera on here. We would have been able to show more footage of it. Then it started raining. And it's been raining and raining and raining. Yeah, well, Kentucky rain. So I think this is way better. And, and it's, it feels good. And, <clears throat> and I noticed uh, when, I, when I took the trail back here on the farm, when I went the same route that I take all my bikes, playing around and going back and we did watching, checking on the cattle. Uh, oh, it's like night and day difference. This feels so much more, I might say in between the Tuareg and the Eight Night Adventure over there. The Eight Night Adventure is, that's pretty good. Well, I got tracked with both front and back. Uh, and it's, you know, uh, it's set up really good. And the, uh, so, but this, this, I didn't want to get, you know, uh, too much travel on it because what happens, it gets kind of uh, diving in the front, especially on twisties when you're going around turns and having to hit the brake and, or come around a turn, you, you know. I didn't like that kind of dive, uh, so, you know, which I, I, that helped a lot by cranking up the preloads on the front. So it got it to where it needs to be. And yeah, I like it. It's really, really, really worked out really good. And so you could buy the 200, I mean the 200, yeah, the 200 millimeter or 190 millimeter travel shock that attractive sales. And it's the, it's the factory, the same as the factory. It's just a way better night and day difference suspension. Uh, shock and uh, you do pretty good you do pretty good you wouldn't have to buy the linkage which I bought the linkage because uh, I already got the uh, uh, shock that's plus 25 millimeters so so uh, but I felt like I needed it I felt like you know maybe a little more travel might not help and uh, you know might not hurt, it might help. And I wanted to check it out and see what what it felt like and it feels really good. Now do you need an extra 25 millimeters on the rear? Well, I don't know, I haven't tried out the one that's the, the uh, stock settings, uh, you know, of uh, uh, the of the attractive rear shock. I haven't tried it out, so I don't, I don't know really what the, you know, the specifications are supposed to be, as far as travel, supposed to be the same as the bike. If you get just the regular one, it's not a plus 25 millimeter travel or a minus 25 millimeter travel. And uh, I have a 32 inch inseam, and like I said, about 275. I didn't know I gained that much weight. myself. So, yeah, I find it really, really, uh, really good. And I, it, is, it is sprung for my weight. And I never did find any problem when I, when I tuned the front suspension, the shocks, on the strut, uh, the uh, forks, when I set the preload on that, that helped a whole lot. It didn't, you know, it didn't seem to bother anything about turning it up. It helped a lot. I think it did. I felt like I was a little, uh, you know, too cushiony. It wasn't bad. The ports weren't bad. It was really good, actually. But, yeah. So it's a whole lot better. Yeah. And I could probably, it's, it's really, it sounds so good, too.
Yeah, yeah. So, there you have it. Uh, got the uh, link on there. Uh, and uh, also with the attractive rear shock by Kent Porter's Beamer Shop. It's beamers.com, beamershop.com. It's B E E M E R S S H O P dot com, beamershop.com. And you'll, you'll show the, the website, Ted, Former, Ted Porter's Beamer Shop. And uh, you can look your bike up, whatever bike you got. One of these, but it's one of the KTM, uh, uh, Honda, you know, or. Uh, I didn't look too much on the Tuareg. I don't think that bike needs anything. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's just, you know, I turned it up a little bit and it feels pretty good. It, it's a little wallowy, but man, it's so plush. I just afraid to touch it. And, uh, but this is really up to improvement. And plus it handles on road very, very good now. It handles, it had a really good before with the suspension that it had before. It really did. And now it's uh, it's really good. It's on-road and off-road. And so I thought I'd show everybody. I'm six foot one and I have a 32 inch inseam. And uh, I feel like, it feels like it's up maybe like I said in one of my other videos, it's like a quarter inch higher feeling like. But I think because this spring is holding me, you know, it's, it's too from my weight. Where the other one, uh, you know, it's set about the same when I got off of it, like in the kickstand. Well, the other one, it just, it just seemed, it <clears throat> seemed like it just was too uh, cushioned, too cushiony. Actually, it would just go down too far in the back. And... And it just showed up right away the sag. It, you know, you you could turn it up and it did help. And if you're a lighter, if you're a lighter rider, then yeah. I don't think there's probably nothing wrong with the rear shot. But if you're a heavier rider, uh yeah. There you go. Attractive suspension from Ted Porter's Beamer Shop. It's Beamershop.com. You get that. You get that very shock, and you'll be very, very pleased. You set it like that, but I advise you not to get that height, 25 millimeter. Don't get that, and get uh, extra 25 millimeter travel because it's going to get you up. It's going to bump you up a little bit. Then uh, when I rode it, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but when I sat down on it. I miss that comfort of that stance, that that uh, nimble feeling and, and confident, uh, slow uh, maneuvering. You know, it, it just did it, it did so well. So now I got it back, but I had to do the linkage. But the uh, linkage was a little extra travel, so I've got a safe cushion, you might say. You know, extra twenty-five millimeter travel. Of, Good stuff, good, 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 yeah, good suspension. So there you have it. On the Transel XL750, the US model, 2024 model, and with the Akupovich muffler. And, and it sounds good, rides good, looks good, and it is good.